In this video, I'm going to talk about the latent functions. This is going to be a tiny sociology class for you. Don't worry, I'm going to go into those old men with their old theories. But I want to explain a few sociological concepts that are used from time to time by politicians. But you can use those concepts also to filter data to see what's going on around you. Society already explained, now no sociologist will tell this directly as it is, but society is a fear construct to keep a community in line. So society is a fear construct in which you keep the population in harmony. Well, that's the purpose of it anyway. And in society, you have functions. What is the function? I know you know what the function is because English may be your native language, but I'm going to explain it for those who don't understand it. A function is a mechanism that serves a purpose. For example, this is a wallet. What's the function of this wallet? To contain these cards. Okay? So, the mechanisms the me to contain the card, that's the function. Okay? A function is a mechanism that serves a purpose. Now, what's the mechanism here? You can put it in and it stays in. You get, a, you get it? So that's a function. Now, in society, you have functions. You have functions that are institutionalized, so they are established and agreed upon by the community. And you have functions that people haven't formally agreed upon, so it's not written in stone, or it's not written in black ink or in the law. But those are just things people want collectively. Or people adhere to. Things like that can be social norms, social values. A dysfunction is when a mechanism fails to deliver what it tends to accomplish. For example, this is a camera. If, however, the camera was broken on the inside, it becomes dysfunctional, so it, it can't fulfill its purpose. Okay? So, a social dysfunction can be unemployment, an obvious one. A social dysfunction can also be a low birth rate. A social dysfunction is a defect in the operation of a society. But then you also have something called latent functions, or sometimes they're called latent dysfunctions, but I'm going to focus on latent functions now. A latent function is when a social dysfunction gives way for something else. Let's say there's a lot of unemployment. Now, certain political parties can come up with a welfare system in which they, pro they gain power politically. Now, that for them is a latent function. Why? Because the social dysfunction, unemployment, led to the opportunity for them to gain political power by coming up with, welfare, with a welfare system. Or it can be that you have a Chinese minority that's, uh, that's, that's the scapegoat of the community, and because of the scapegoating, there's a lot of unemployment and a lot of violence with the Chinese um, min minority. And now this social dysfunction the violence against the Chinese minority now serves as a motivation for everyone else to comply with society. Now, that latent function doesn't have to be a good thing, but it does contribute to the functioning of that society. If you don't understand what I said, just rewind the video, watch it again, or you can look it up for yourself in a library or online. Just I explained it in as easy as possible to you here. Okay, why do I want to talk about latent functions? It is because when you understand latent functions, you will understand why people don't want some solutions. Or better said, there are times there is an obvious issue going on in the community or there's an obvious problem, but nobody wants to face it. And then you think, why aren't people acknowledging it? this? Why aren't, is anyone doing something about it? But when you understand the latent function that's possible by the social dysfunction, you'll understand why folks aren't doing anything about it. Okay, I'm going to give a parable now, as you know of me. 
So you have, um, I'm not going to name the name of a country, I'm going to just give the parable and you may guess which country I'm talking about. So you have this country that recently joined the European Union. Well, not recently, it's over more than a decade now. But in this country, you have a Russian minority. As in most countries in the central east of Europe, they have a Russian minority. And now, the Russian minority is often associated with scammers. And there are indeed many Russian scammers operative worldwide. But this scamming thing is associated with the Russian minority in this country. All the time in the news you will hear about Russian scammers. And then there was this news um, network that stated that last year alone Russian scammers cost us 400 million euros. Well, they count into euros. Whether the country has a euro or not doesn't matter, okay? They want to be euro centric, so they count in euros. 400 million euros. And then a lot of people hear the news and they're upset. But no. There's this one guy, let's call him uh, Umar. He's a, he's a migrant from Africa. Or he's from Zimbabwe. And Umar lives in this country. He speaks the language. He also speaks French and German. Because those are two, so two very important languages in Europe. And Umar thinks, hold well, on a minute. Let me check how many Russians live in this uh, country. And he realized, hold on a minute, the, the amount of Russians aren't even that much. Maybe around 8% or less than 8% is Russian. And even many of them are half Russian, so the actual number of real Russians here are, are like 5%. So he thinks only 5% of people here are Russian. Hmm, okay. And then you look at what kind of occupation do those people have. Most of them don't even have a high occupation. They work as cleaners, they're actually doing a dirty job nobody else wants to do. Only a few of them have businesses. So you only have a few Russian shops here and there in the country. There aren't, there, there even, aren't even many Russian shops around. There's a lot of Russian vodka because there's a lot of people who want to drink that but it's not a lot of Russian businesses over there. So you do the math. You realize, on a minute, how can a community that's so, so how can such, a, such a tiny minority be responsible for so much scamming? You realize this, is, this, is, this can't be true. And then you find out that many of those Russian folks are in debt to Russian corporations or to or to the student loans to the, to the local government. Then think that one minute, how can these people steal 400 million euros? Where did those 400 million euros go? And then you realize that the Russian corporations that are the creditors of the Russian migrants are also half bankrupt. So then you realize that this whole stigmatization of Russians is a social dysfunction. But then you think, okay, what's the, fun what's the latent function of it? And then you figure out that there are many people from, uh, from there are many Chinese folks who live over there and they own casinos and they robbed many people. So you realize there are many Chinese scammers around also in the country. And then you think, well, I mean, why is it anyone talking about the Chinese scammers? And then you figure out that some Chinese corporation has invested a lot of money in some IT sector over there. And then you think, aha, now I get it. Many of those scammers are Chinese students, Chinese exchange students that come here to earn some extra money. But if the government begins to take action against them, China may use this against us, so that's why they tolerate the Chinese scammers. So this, in, this codependence on, this economic codependence on China now, becomes, it is a dysfunction, and to cover it up, you have this other dysfunction that has been fabricated and, and is maintained as this stigmatization against Russians. So anytime something bad goes into the economy, it's a fault of the Russians. Then you also find out in some newspapers that 
the, the, many corporations were involved in scandals, even insurance companies that stole money from their customers. So you see that economically there's a lot of things that don't, don't add up, but to cover it all up so that society doesn't collapse and there's a lot of civil unrest, the Russians are to blame. So it's then that you found out, let's say you're Umar, the then Umar understood why nothing is done to help the Russian minority get a job. There are some with jobs, but many of them are on welfare. And now you understand why they're kept on welfare. Because the government doesn't really want them all to have a job, because once all the Russians have a job, then you can't use them anymore as a scapegoat for the financial show dysfunction of society. And once you can't do that, people are really want, want to know what's going on. And once people find out what's going on, there's, there's going to be a lot of people upset, there's going to be people that, that will escalate, and no, you don't want that. So, the fact that man, many of the Chinese, of the, of the Russians, or minority, had no job, it was a systematic injustice that was, was kept intact to preserve the function of that society. You get what I'm saying here? So you have the social function, social dysfunction, and the social latent function. They said it well, social function, social, social function, social dysfunction, and the social latent function. Okay? Apply this also to the spiritual. For example, it can be, I'm talking to believers now, okay? It can be that you are praying. By the way, I'm not comparing the kingdom of God to society now, but I'm using it as a parable for you to understand what I'm about to explain now. About the latent functions. It can be that you're praying for, let me say that you're praying for your own farm. You want a farm because you see that if you have a plot of land and you build, and you stay in your own agriculture, you're less dependent on having a job. You know it's not going to be easy work, but you're willing to do it. So you're praying about it, but every time you're about to get a plot of land, it's the night. Either the government said, oh, sorry, we owe someone else bought a plot of land, or maybe the bank doesn't want to issue the loan, even though they promised they would. So every time there is something coming up, and you think, Lord, why is this happening? You think it's some demon working against us. You know, you use spiritual warfare. You want it to be solved. Because in your eyes, in your perception, the fact that you can't get a plot of land is a dysfunction. It's something you want to fight. But then, one day someone tells you, uh, Frank, you wanted to get a plot of land, right? You talked about it to me four years ago. And you said, yeah, I wanted to do it, but I tried to get a plot of land so often, but they keep denying to me. And then this guy tells you, Frank, most of the farmland that's for sale in this state, they're not fertile as they used to be. 20 years ago, all that land was quite fertile, but due to chemical abuse by capitalists, much of the farmland is polluted. So a lot of farmers abandoned those, uh, those lands. Anyone who purchases a land now is not informed about the polluted state. So when they begin to farm and begin to sell their crops, the crops will be contaminated. And when people become sick, it's the farmers that will be blamed, and not the corporations that cause the pollution. So Frank, you were telling me that you often were denied owning a plot of land here. Be glad you don't own a plot of land over here. The guy didn't really listen to you with that. You were disappointed that you didn't get a plot of land, but he's just telling you. Actually, Holy Spirit informing you through him that you didn't get a plot of land, that prayer did not manifest the way you wanted it, because if you would have gotten a plot of land, 15 years later, you would face charges and you would have an angry mob of the community coming after you and your family. So what, what appeared to you as a dysfunction really was not a dysfunction at all. Okay? The latent function of you not getting an answer 
directly why the prayer was answered was you learning to walk by faith and not by sight. There are times bad things happen, okay? And the Holy Spirit allows bad things to happen because that gives space for a latent function to um, increase you in other ways. For example, it may be that, okay, let me give you a biblical example now. You had Isaac. Isaac farms and he was quite successful. Everywhere he went, farming, enemies turned up, they dumped dirt in his wells, they chased him away. Isaac didn't want to fight because he thought about the safety of his uh, household, he just moved. And Isaac kept moving, moving, and moving. Isaac, because of that, he learned uh, how conditions were in the territory. He gained more experience in farming. And not only that, after a while, those people that resisted him were so exhausted, they wanted peace. But by now, though to all that moving, Isaac had invested so much in that region that his stakeholdership increased. And because his stakeholdership increased, we realized we need to pay attention to this man. Because if he farmed up somewhere and then moved, other people are going to ask, why is it, where is it Isaac? Why did he go? People aren't just going to take over your farm because they think, uh, where's Isaac? So, without Isaac being aware of it, it led to the increase of his economic relevance. And it's because of the increase of his economic relevance that people suddenly wanted social peace with him. It wasn't real peace from the heart, but it was just they wanted to be left alone. They wanted Isaac to attack them. How could Isaac ever attack them if Isaac was on the run all the time? No. Their violence against Isaac was their violence. It was not from the Most High. Probably um, inspired by demons, but it wasn't from God. God did not agree with it. He did not condone it. But God used this this function to manifest another function, and that's to increase the economic relevance of Isaac. And this economic relevance led to him being able to leave an estate, uh, divide into one for Esau, one for Jacob, and it's the estate that Jacob received that was used to bring up Joseph, from which Joseph later, after he was uh, deported to Egypt, later became the Prime Minister of Egypt, and the uh, Israelite tribe moved into Egypt and right later developed into a people. So the Holy Spirit, seeing the full picture, used uh, this function to manifest a latent function. And you need to learn to see things like that also. There are dysfunctions out there, absolutely. There is persecution, there is retaliation, there is tribulation coming after you when you walk by faith. But you just look at the dysfunction, look at the latent function. Because the enemy doesn't want you to see the latent function. The enemy wants you to focus on the dysfunction with all your mind so that you be, become intoxicated with the dysfunction. No. Christ wants you to acknowledge the dysfunction, but you trust Him no matter what. And while you keep walking by faith, you realize that that dysfunction really enabled a latent function that benefits you in the long run. It can be that you, that you were falsely accused of something. And that's a dysfunction. That's something you don't want to happen. But a lot of folks believe it and begin to spread rumors about you. And now more people begin to believe it. You lost friends. Then a few years later, you are somewhere else. You, you, you forgot about all that happened. And then suddenly you realize, don't a minute. All those people that were around me that believed all those lies without checking the facts. What type of people are they? They're people who just want to be relieved. I don't care at whose expense it is. So then you realize those are not people you should even want around you. But you couldn't see the back then. But because this um, accusation rose against you, their true colors, or say their emptiness was revealed. And because their emptiness was revealed, they exposed themselves. And once they've exposed themselves, they couldn't face themselves. So now they moved away from you. Because they didn't want to admit they were wrong also. Because they didn't want to admit their, their narcissistic attitude. Now, you lost all those codependent co folks. And because of that, you are not in bondage to their 
um, anxiety anymore. So the accusation rose against you was wrong. It's not you shouldn't condone it. Nobody should condone it. It's you can't justify it. It was wrong, but it serves a latent function. Just think about that. Always look at the bigger picture. Remember, Satan will always uh, distract you with a with a counterfeit blessing or a dysfunction so that you won't see the latent functions that are working out. Well, that's it for now. Keep a cream with Christ and be at peace.